For all your t-shirt needs, check out Tee Public's Killer Selection. Follow the link in the description. Hey, what's up, people? Piz Zow here, and today I want to talk to you guys about the new Umbrella Entertainment Canon Classics double feature for Death Wish 4 and Death Wish 5. Now, this is partially going to be a review of both movies as well as a review of this Blu-ray release. And now, anybody who's followed my channel for any period of time know I love the Death Wish movies. I love all the Death Wish movies, including Death Wish 4 and 5, even though the the magic that was Death Wish 2 and Death Wish 3 is not quite there in Death Wish 4 and 5. It's still a little bit there in Death Wish 4, but by Death Wish 5, the magic is kind of gone, even though I still love Death Wish 5. Now, Death Wish 4, the crackdown, we find Paul Kersey played yet again by the legendary Charles Bronson. He has met a woman, a single mother who has a daughter, and as you know from this series, the most dangerous place in the world is at Paul Kersey's side. Anybody who's a friend of his or uh, romantically linked to him or the child of someone who is romantically linked to him, um, you're going to die. You're just going to die. Um, of course, the young lady, the daughter of the single mother that Paul Kersey is romantically entangled with, she overdoses on drugs which sets Paul Kersey on a mission wherein he uh, ultimately not only wipes out one drug cartel um, not just wipes out two entire drug cartels but by the end of Death Wish 4 Paul Kersey has taken down three separate drug cartels pretty much single-handedly. Now, in Death Wish 3, you know he committed a mini-genocide in that movie. Um, so the body count is still pretty high up there in Death Wish 4. Um, of course, it is a canon film, so you've got plenty of cheesiness in there to keep you entertained. You've got those canon sort of prerequisites, um, with the exception of, I don't recall there being any um, nudity in Death Wish 4, which is odd. Um, for a canon film and for a, a, a Death Wish film. Um, but you've got a huge body count. You've got plenty of action sequences. The film was actually directed by J. Lee Thompson, who, um, if you guys recall my review of Happy Birthday to Me, he also directed Happy Birthday to Me. He directed the original Cape Fear. He directed The Guns of the Navarone. So this guy's definitely, you know, he's he's been around the block. He knows how to direct, uh, how to direct a movie. Um, it's a well-made film. It's just a fun Death Wish movie. It's a fun Death Wish movie. And that magic that was in Death Wish 2 and Death Wish 3, it's depleted a bit here in Death Wish 4, but it's still definitely there. It's a very fun movie. Um, I, I like it a lot. Now, as for Death Wish 5, the face of death, we find Paul Kersey back in New York City, although I'm pretty sure it was filmed somewhere in Canada. Um, he has found himself romantically entangled with another single mother who has a young daughter. She is a fashion designer. Unfortunately for her, her ex is a big time gangster and um, she doesn't last very long. Uh, put it that way. Uh, he takes custody of the young girl. And of course, this does not set well with Paul Kersey, because as we all know, he is the one man mass murder machine. So he sets out to make the wrong things right, which at this point in the series, you would kind of think maybe Kersey would go, you know what? Maybe it's me. Uh, because everybody who I become romantically entangled with, um, they end up dead. Usually if they have kids, those kids end up dead. Maybe I should just try this single thing for a while. <laughs> um, but Death Wish 5 was definitely, I think, the cheapest of the canon Death Wish movies. And it certainly shows. Um, like I said, clearly this was not shot in New York City. It was clearly shot somewhere in Canada. Um, it was shot on a lot of what appeared to be sound stages and kind of cheap sound stages. Um, just... Uh, 
from a, 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 a sort of a cinematic point of view, the movie just looks kind of cheap. Um, it's the magic is clearly gone by death wish five, but there's still something about the movie that I definitely like. Of course, it, it's got Bronson in it. It's Bronson doing what we want to see Bronson do in a Death Wish movie. Although on a smaller scale, when you're talking about Death Wish 3, which is, I said before, he commits a, 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 a mini genocide. And then in Death Wish 4, he kills three different drug cartels. I think the body count in part five is like six or seven people. So... Also keep in mind, Charles Bronson was in his early seventies by the time he made Death Wish Five. So, but but even then, I mean, he he looked good. He was getting around quite well, and he was doing the things that we all want to see Charles Bronson do in a Death Wish movie quite well, just on a smaller, um, less budgeted kind of way. Um, but I still like Death Wish Five quite a lot. It's definitely not on par with the other films in the series. Um, but I still like death wish five quite a lot. And of course this was the last time Charles Bronson played Paul Kersey. Um, so that makes it kind of near and dear to my heart, uh, as well. Uh, now this Blu-ray from umbrella entertainment, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't say anything on the back here about any kind of elaborate uh, transfer or restoration for the films. However, the films do look pretty good on Blu-ray. I give the picture quality and sound quality for both of them, uh, three and a half out of five. Um, as far as the extras are concerned, we get uh, Death Wish 4 and 5 theatrical trailers, Death Wish 4 TV spot, Death Wish 4 TV broadcast promo, Death Wish 4 and 5 VHS previews, and image gallery, and we get commentaries for both films by author Paul Talbot, who wrote this book here, Bronson's Loose, the making of the Death Wish films, and he also wrote, um, I believe the follow-up to this is it, it's called Bronson's Loose Again. Great book, by the way. Um, I watched Death Wish 4 and 5, about 45 minutes of each, um, with Mr. Talbot's commentary. The guy the guy knows his Death Wish. Um, put it that way. The guy knows his Death Wish. Very, very informative commentaries um, for both films by Mr. Talbot. He is a Death Wish expert. Put it that way. Um, but this is a very nice Blu-ray release for both of these films from Umbrella Entertainment. You get both of them together. You get some pretty nice extras. You get very informative commentaries for both. Um, the picture quality and the sound quality are both good for this release. And it's Death Wish 4 and 5. I love both the movies. If you love Death Wish 4 and 5, definitely look into picking up this Blu-ray release from the fine folks over at Umbrella Entertainment. If you've not seen any of the Death Wish movies, go watch the Death Wish movies. Um, <laughs> the first film is very, very serious. It's sort of a social commentary. Um, I like that movie, but in the context of the canon Death Wish movies, it's almost like it's it's... It's completely separate. I love the canon Death Wish movies. I wholeheartedly recommend all of the canon Death Wish movies, Death Wish 2 to Death Wish 5. Um, so I would highly recommend you guys checking them out if you haven't. Um, of course, Umbrella released uh, Part 2 and Part 3 together on a canon classics double feature Blu-ray release just like this. Um, about a year or so ago, I did a review of that Blu-ray. Go check it out. And I highly recommend this Blu-ray set as well for both Death Wish 4 and Death Wish 5. Uh, on the back of the Blu-ray case, it is indicated that this release is Region B. However, I can tell you that it is all region. It will play on any Blu-ray player on in any region, region A, B, C. So don't worry about that if you do decide to pick up this Blu-ray from Umbrella Entertainment. I'll put a link to their website in the description. If you've seen Death Wish 4 and 5, please let me know your thoughts on them down in the comment section below. Let me know your thoughts on any of the Death Wish films, quite frankly, down in the comments section uh, below. Uh, if you guys have not donated to the Support Crystal Lake fundraiser that I am running 
Follow the link in the description. Go over and check it out. I'm working with Camp Nobi Bosco, which is the camp where the original Friday the 13th was filmed. All of the screen-used cabins from Friday the 13th are in need of repair, and I really want those cabins to be repaired to preserve the legacy of Friday the 13th and to preserve those cabins for future generations to go and visit and enjoy as much as I did when I visited the camp back in April. So follow the link in the description, check out that video, and please consider donating to the Support Crystal Lake fundraiser. I would greatly appreciate it. If you guys like this video, please leave it a thumbs up. If you're not following me on social media, those links are in the description. They're also right around here. As always, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care, and until next time, peace. Join the A Buck A Month Club and help support my channel on Patreon. Thank you to my current patrons, Kevin Smythe, Orc145626, Movie Mike, Stephen Flanagan, Lori Holt, Mitch O'Dell, Craig Ferrand, Robert Sobel, Farron Sutton, Jeremiah Lambert, Terry Delamore, Joseph Charlesworth, Grindhouse Grotto, Derek Janna, PB Sam 6, Demon Waffles, Tim Williams, and Stone Gassman. Say hello to the internet, Jeremy. Hello to the internet.